iedzīvotāji un, un vajadzības mikrorēni plašāk saprotot to, ka population or inhabitants, I would like to say that we usually think of uh, these uh, areas as of the multi-floor building volumes and areas uh, which were built during the Soviet Union period. Basically, what we present here is the work of uh, several students, and last year we th we were attempting to think about uh, the new possible housing policy in Latvia, which needs to be shaped. Well, it is n there is none in place in Latvia as such, and this is particularly uh, important for Riga. Well, in the context of uh, housing, in policy or housing as such, we think about, we have talked about many things and I have to mention that experts in the field of policy development phase have already discussed this matter. The key problems have been identified with regard to the structure of property as well as with regard to technical matters. And recently, certainly discussions have been held with terms of the participation of the population in the shaping of policy have also been helpful. Well, additionally, to the discussions, we also wish to take a look at what we do during the studies with the people's perspective, with the population's perspective. We also wish to look at this from the point of view of the regular inhabitants as opposed to the professionals' perspectives. We understand that there is this uh, urban fabric in place, but at the same time we have some certain covert physical fabric in place as well. Basically this is the city and the activity taking place in the city in various shapes and manifestations. Well, it is there and, uh, and housing is one of the uh, parts of the activity or liveliness of a city that is uh, basically the most uh, explicit manifestation of it. We lack knowledge in the field of uh, the populations or inhabitants uh, wishes and needs and desires, but what we all understand is that people are different. The population differs among groups, and sometimes the perspectives and knowledge of inhabitants is quite limited. We see that the city changes and develops. It changes historically, and it even changes seasonally. We see what the trajectories of people's lives are. Is We also see it changing during the course of, say, days and weeks. In terms of the policy development, it is important for us to think of from the scaling perspective. What is the object of this policy, basically, we, what we need to think? Is it the city in its entireness? We need to have the surroundings and the, probably the suburbs, but what are the scales that we have to work in? What is the humane dimension of this housing policy? We have to think about it as well. I mentioned the intermediary approach. We discuss the perspective of inhabitants. We also carry, we take a look at the spatial and communicative analysis. We analyze the space, so the living space, we, we think about both the apartments as well as the buildings and we interlink it with the surrounding or adjacent spaces. We think about the, the human, uh, human practi life practice, so we, make, we carry out mental mapping, social profiling, as well as uh, uh, we carry out uh, partly structured interviews. We've uh, tried, therefore, to identify the needs and key issues to be addressed by the policy. And we can provide you only a brief overview of uh, the 
uh, policy uh, forming uh, or policy making work that we do. Uh, this Waterman last year we worked on Sarka and Daugava area and there are two uh, spots that uh, we um, focused uh, on specifically, and these are very characteristic area for Riga with multiple layers of historic and social information, and these are very characteristic to Riga, although they are a bit uh, less populated compared to other areas. So the central part of Sarkandago or the core of Sarkandago and the territory between the Vyester Prospects and the railroad is the area that we analyzed in depth. So what concerns this multi-layered or mixed uh, urban environment, well, it offers a great diversity from the urban structure point of view, uh, from the uh, occupancy uh, point of view, well, from all aspects of the urban fabric. And uh, there is also a great variety of uh, shapes and sizes. Although these are micro units of uh, houses, their technical condition, at least in the parts, that have been recently built is uh, significantly different to the historic sort of heritage, and there is also a great potential to spend a lot of time out, a lot of time outdoors, which differs, you know, from area to area. It is um, uh, quite dense with. Uh, architectural and social information and uh, sometimes you know in some areas seasonality plays uh, a little role therefore people are actively using the outdoor space as regards to outdoor uh, areas. Uh, the more um, outdoors space is used, uh, the stronger is your loyalty or the sense of belonging to a particular area, particular area and you also feel a liberty to contribute to the space um, if you uh, have the sense of belonging to it. And uh, these are the areas of the city where people are actively transforming the environment or space so they are contributing to small infrastructure objects facilities and amenities and so on and so forth so it's very important to uh, target uh, those who have settled in uh, uh, many years ago, or so to say, the main occupants uh, or the main residents there, and when uh, people come to a new area, when they come to a new house that has been recently built, uh, they have to coexist with the previous uh, sort of locals. And in Sarkandago, we have two types of buildings, you know, the traditional buildings uh, with all the social aspects. Uh, and um, the residential space is uh, therefore developed on the basis of, uh, if you will, tr traditions. Uh, and uh, then there are new buildings that are, in a way, a bit more detached from the surrounding environment and therefore are creating more empty spaces uh, around it. So how can we ensure that 
uh, there is a meaningful coexistence between the new buildings and uh, the old buildings. Um, uh, Sarkandogo is not an exception. Uh, you can see that in many other parts of the city, uh, fenced uh, of uh, areas and uh, micro environments that are being created as a result of uh, setting up various fences. There is a great diversity of typology and uh, the residents themselves evaluate this housing uh, very highly. So uh, the proximity to their workplace, which has been historically the main um, the main uh, mm, factor influencing the choice of housing, the availability of housing has been uh, valued very highly. Also, the positive attitude towards industrial activities, characteristic or traditional to the area, which is again sort of linking together with the work proximity and so on and so forth, is very well known to the residents. It's traditional, really. It's their own. They basically own it, in other words. As regards to structured uh, space, well, uh, structuring of the space, it is well structured and uh, uh, it, it also it is very well structured in the minds of people. So he, he, that, those were some pictures of the mental mapping. And what concerns uh, Viester Prospects, the street is uh, often uh, uh, an axis, uh, main axis by which Sarkandagos is identified and uh, Meshtsiem's uh, inhabitants also consider it as an axis has a very well structured um, built uh, areas uh, built in Soviet times. However, there is a big social activity in the yards of uh, these uh, houses and people are very, very keen to use the outdoor space uh, inside those houses and people are more and more introducing or bringing the change themselves into this environment. So from this micro environment uh, point of view, they are seeing the opportunities and the possibility to change or improve the environment around them. And of course, people differ. People are different. Uh, their experiences are different and the length of living in uh, the area also differs. What concerns urban uh, planning uh, and uh, social aspects, well, it is highly valued by people who have uh, live in, who have been living there for a number of years and there are very close links between various communities of course people are you know very closely linked by the same workplace they work but uh, another binding if you will element is uh, the, the the backyards or uh, yard so uh, around this the prospects you know the life satisfaction uh, when we were looking for the, 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 the needs and challenges uh, that we should address through a housing policy, uh, um, uh, people very exhibited a very strong link or relationship with the environment and attitudes toward the environment. And where this link is stronger, the, the attitude towards the city in general is a bit more positive. So we don't really see any uh, dissatisfaction with uh, the area or with the housing. They are, the people there are rather dissatisfied with uh, the uh, uh, proposed uh, community activities. And a lot of people are ready to get engaged in various community activities. 70% are either active uh, members of the community or would like to be active members of the community. So. As regards to the conclusions, conclusions that we can derive uh, from uh, survey of the inhabitants is that they highly value the housing, which sort of contradicts with our understanding of the housing policy or what the housing policy should address. 
the inhabitants, uh, the residents there who see you know, housing uh, from a wider perspective and who appreciate the outdoors uh, adjacent to these houses, so the, uh, the yards and their um, uh, empowerment uh, and uh, so on and so forth is also contributing to higher evaluation. However, we are lacking uh, you know, drivers, local drivers like organizations uh, that would sort of bind together that the community for the sake of a common goal. So that is the, what the housing policy should address. And last but not least, very briefly, what we have heard from the residents is that we are missing social agents or organizations, as I already mentioned. So this is a local policy that we need. It shouldn't be a comprehensive city-scale policy that we should we should focus on also on uh, the, the policy for various areas as well. So one of the things that we can implement in order to revitalize the city is to connect uh, uh, or combine uh, the uh, city uh, level investments with local investments, and people are ready for that. So, thank you very much. I would like to thank Peter Schinz and Gunther Luxtinger for giving us recommendations or conclusions or proposals for the further development of these residential areas. These are very interesting conclusions uh, in uh, the specific context of Sarkandago, but can also be transferred or upscaled to a lot to. Uh,